when generally asked what art life is, depending upon who asks the question, I have probably a dozen different answers that I give people. So to some people, it's merely a magazine. To others, it's a portfolio of original artwork. To others, it's a trade journal for people in the trade, since it's a language that most people don't understand. But above and beyond all those things and every other mutation thereof, to me, it's a conceptual exchange that taps into a global consciousness every month. And it's a way for creative people to exchange their ideas with kindred spirits, both near and far. So the conceptual exchange aspect of it is something that is always uh, first and foremost in my mind. Secondly, it is actually a portfolio of limited edition works. When I designed it, the reason I put it into a magazine format was so that it would be user friendly, so that people would feel comfortable handling work, which normally might be thought to be uh, a little more precious than if it's readily available for people to handle. It's called Evidence of the Hand for Papa Joe. And it has an epigraph by Joe, art life is not meant to be a monologue, but a conversation among creative people. Joe Cardella. Mostly we spoke through labor, words, images, placed on a page, missives, and more. We gathered them 11 times a year in Joe's workshop. Pages ordered by hand and pressed into journals, evidence of the hand and mind of the artist, as Joe would say, then journals scattered across the planet. We were communicants of sorts, missionaries, trying to pass the word and image to anyone who would want this image. From all over the world, people gathered here on this table with their work, their hope, their eyes, their words, their soul. Papa Joe and his merry band would commune to make it so. Once a month, Joe and I would discuss what we did, what's next, and what did it mean. Mostly it was about defining community, who and where and when. As the years rolled, the language became shorthand, a new way, and old ideas rubbing against each other for warmth and perspective, but always in touch with art and truth, evidence of the hand, the mind of the artist lived here. So by design, Art Life was created to be collected, it was created to be archived, it was created to be handled by people, be user friendly, and to communicate ideas to people at great distances, which it has more than accomplished over the past 23 years. So the conceptual exchange aspect of it is the thing that I believe is the most important because it links a very loose network of people together internationally. And one thing it has taught me is that it is impossible to have a thought that is not occurring to someone else somewhere else in the world. Because routinely, when we put these issues together, there will always be pages that will occur done by people halfway around the world who don't even know of each other's existence. You put the work next to each other and it appears as though they had planned for this to happen. However, there was no plan, there was no intention. It's just that tapping into a global consciousness. So one of the slogans that we used over the years were that uh, art life 
is where the wellspring meets the mainstream. So we are getting ideas from the source and we are presenting them to the mainstream. And this aspect of it is very exciting to me. And as was my original intention uh, to exchange ideas with people, uh, art life has gone far beyond my wildest expectations in terms of reaching people globally and being included in the finest libraries and archives in America today.